You know, Bob Craig has seen it all and done it all. He was at the right time, in the right place, in so many moments in his life. I mean, he owned a ranch in, in Aspen. He taught the 10th Mountain Division how to ski. He traveled to the South Pole. You know, he's the founding executive director of the Aspen Institute. He was on the first ship into Nagasaki after the bombing of the city. As a mountaineer, Bob Craig's an iconic figure. He has uh, climbed mountains like Everest and K2 and the High Palmiers. You know, he's a man of all seasons. Great intellectual thinker, a Renaissance man. He was on the forefront of how science is used in the equation of policy development. He's been one of the giants, the true giants of the 20th century. I've always felt that um, there's been too much of an emphasis on uh, conquest and so on, and overpowering nature. I'm not one of, of that school. You know, we're, we're here and we do these things, but in that process, there is a certain nobility in, in a lot of things that human beings do that is separate from the, the conquest side. It, it's partly the teamwork, it's partly the friendship, it's partly human determination to, to achieve something. About 1934, 35, I began reading books like The Epic of Mount Everest. And of course, we lived on Lake Washington in Seattle, and we could look across and see the Cascades, and then gradually it was drawn into the mountains. What got you into skiing? Was it a friend? Was it a missile? Just uh, the fascination with the idea of skiing. I just gradually found ways of, and my parents were indulgent and willing to support my desire to go skiing. Right. But I got to do that, and I got to start climbing at the same time. My first mountain experience was in the Boy Scouts when I was 12, and I climbed Mount Si, which is the little peak that above the North Bend. What's a good climbing route? What is a good climbing yeah. route? I think you, knowing me, you know the answer to that, that compatible people with a sense of humor who don't take themselves too seriously, but are proficient and skillful and reliable and willing to sacrifice for the other guy, not just for oneself. A sense of humor in the mountains is is, in my estimation, really something that more people should insist on. So I've always had enjoyable times in the mountains. And I've been lucky enough to pick my partners and climb with some people that I really enjoy climbing with. It's just as important as the climb itself. I've wandered onto a lot of scenes, and I've been in a lot of funny circumstances and survived. And, but I've never considered myself a preeminent climber. I mean, I was good, I was competent, and I was dependable, and I think that I never let anybody down, but mountaineering was not my total passion. I had met Walter Pepke before I went to K2 cocktail party in Aspen in the spring of 53. I was fascinated by the fact that, that somebody like Pepke was trying to do what he was trying to do, and that was, became a turning point in my life because Pepke had a huge impact on me and on my thinking. And, you know, I've, I feel lucky that I got to, to be able to run the Aspen Institute and that Walter was, well, he was a remarkable guy. He was very difficult to many people, but I must say I, I admired him and I liked him and he was very tolerant of me because I'm sure I made lots of mistakes as a young kid. I went in the, in the business of um, design, not so much product design as graphic design. I was very much influenced by Herbert Beyer who was a former Bauhaus master and had been the um, chief of design at Container Corporation and was living in Aspen. And we formed a company in Chicago called Unimark International. We had a great success in that company, uh, but um, I never really enjoyed the design business uh, in the way that I, I had hoped I would. About that time, Bob Maynard, whom I'd met in a cocktail party in San Francisco, came into the office one day and said, have you got another Aspen in you? And I said, I don't think I have another Aspen. I wouldn't want to be trying to duplicate Aspen, but I have an idea that might work. And that was the beginning of my thinking about the Keystone Center. The Keystone 
Center became, you might say, the definition of the term conflict resolution in the United States. You can't have to rebuild a building. It's a Keystone Center building. It's named after me and all of that. That's okay. It may have come out of my experience in, in mountaineering that um, I always encourage the staff to dare to fail. It, it's one thing to want to get safely through a dialogue, but you have to sometimes take chances. And it, it could go the wrong way. But we've had a lot of successes too, and that's, that's what kept us going. I chose to make my career not in the mountains, but in, I hope, the world of ideas. But um, I think that mountaineering is, is one of the penultimate experiences that, that men and women can have in uh, sharing and in uh, confronting difficult problems and solving them occasionally. But I, uh, I had the privilege of, of being in some pretty interesting places as a result of my involvement in climbing. And I met some of my best friends in the mountains in life. And, uh,